my life, Superintendent Summers, Dr. Promise, all the cool pit preachers, ministers, pastors, everybody who's in their respective places. I'm coming from a familiar scripture, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. I think this scripture was prepared for us today. And he gives some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now when I look at this here, if I'm coming from the room, you go to verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification, the body of Christ. And we look at this, we look at the five, four ministries. And saints, when we look at it, we have to come in and be unified in this church. We can't come in and say that, you know, we all looking for a name here. If I can use for, I'm going to use, what is your name? And, it gives a, and when I look at your name, I look at, I don't look at my name, I look at the name that God prepared for us. And then when I look at it, when you look at your name and say, neighbor, what is your name? Neighbor, look at, what, look at your other name and say, neighbor, what is your name? Let's do it for the Holy Ghost. What is your name? As we look around, we look for, as we look around, we look at a brand. We look at a name. And we all look at something as a name. If I can take for Paul, instance, he's one of my favorite ones in the Bible. I look at Paul as he used to be Saul. He was Paul. He was Paul. He was Saul before he turned Paul. Because God had to give him. God had to give him down at the master road of spirits. And when you look at that Damascus Road of Spirit, if it was from Paul, we wouldn't have had 13 chapters in the New Testament right now. Because when you look at Paul, he had to understand that he was a vessel. That God had to turn him around and place his foot on solid ground. And when you look at his name, he had to turn his name because perfect another church. We are not what we used to be, and we still not follow what we want to be. But you know what? We're still in Christ right now. We're still walking and talking in him. Because of this, because he changed our name. We look at this brand he's looking at. I know I understand it's free gospel. It's free gospel, glory and honor, one step of faith, and restoration, deliverance. It is a brand. Yes. But it's this brand in Christ right now. I want to ask you, it's a name, but it's a brand that we made a transition in Christ. We look at a new dimension right now. It's a new dimension. This year, we're looking at a new dimension. He's taking us back in this place. He's taking us back in him. That's why he had to change our name. He changed our name. We are not what we used to be. We talk to sinners. He talks to sinners like us. We were some wretches like us. Look at some of us as a prostitute. Some of us some drug dealers. Some of us some gangsters. But you know what? To tell the church, I'm glad I'm not what I used to be. Because he changed my name. That's why he gave us the apostle. That's why we go to the now We go to the byway and pray for people to Christ. Because he changed my name. He changed your name. He changed you. Because I'm sorry, Dr. Prime. I know Dr. is a high you can go. But it's high. It ain't no higher height. It ain't no deeper depth. But you know what? Saints, I can say my thing. I thank God for being here. I thank God. I thank God. Because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be standing here right now. I wouldn't be somewhere in Washington at a jailhouse right now. But now the crime I committed. I thank God for him. I look around and look at Abraham. He had to change the Abraham. Because he had to change the Abraham because of the fact that because he said his descendants would be blessed. And we know that his descendants right now. He said that his glory is going to be blessed. He told that the womb going to be blessed. Look at the zeal we have. Look at the perfection. Look at the imperfection that we have. But you know I'm not I'm glad that I'm not what I used to be. Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, out of the 
Father will destroy them that believe not. One thing that we have in the church, if we have ungodly people that have crept in the church, we have ungodly circumstances that have crept in the church. I've never seen so many people doing the worldly things in the church. They got their hands out back doing all the things they see on music videos. They come in saying all kind of corrupt things and they fooling our young people. But God don't get you. You keep on doing the mess. God don't get you. Because God's way is holy. And his holiness is hell. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care how they make it look. One thing about God is holiness or hell. If you're not holy, you're not going to heaven. If you're not holy, your place will be in the lake of fire. For I heard the Lord say that the mouth of hell will enlarge in itself. So if you're doing wrong, if you're talking the wrong talk, if you're acting the wrong way, if you're living the wrong way, your place will be in the lake of fire. One thing we got to realize is you have to live this life. You can't just talk about it, but you got to live it every day of the week, every hour of the day. I want to be holy. I want to be holy. Look at your neighbor and say holy. Say holy to the hell.
accomplishment that he must accomplish. He must accomplish the task at hand. There's a task that we must accomplish, y'all. There is a task, y'all. And we will not accomplish the task if we don't put on the whole armor of God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness, and against all spiritual wickedness. We are to fight, y'all. We are to fight for our lives. And we got to put on the garment. We got to put on the whole armor of God. But some of us, we got on half the garment. We half dressed. How can you work when you half dressed? Surely half. You're going to get hurt on the job. You're going to get injured on the job. When you're half dressed, even your boss, if he catch you the first time, he'll warn you the first time. The second time, he'll write you up. Then the third time, he'll terminate you. Some of us, the Lord has terminated some of us. In the book of Romans, chapter 1, he said he got them up. He said it more than one time. But he said it two times. I have given them up. And then he went on to say, I have given them over to a reprobate That tells me that the Lord, he has terminated you. Because you're working in an unsafe environment. But you don't have on the whole armor of God. You got a form of godliness. But denying the power of that will. You got to realize, saints, that we're working in an unsafe environment. And I'm almost through. Two more minutes. I've never seen a time when a schoolhouse had to have a police officer to patrol the school. When I was coming up, y'all, I've never seen such a thing. We never had a police officer. All they had to do was say, we're going to call this cop. And she was the police. But now that is us. Because the environment is unsafe. We got all kinds of stuff going on in the school. So they have to have a police officer to keep it safe. To keep the environment safe. And you got to have, you got to have God to work in this environment. You're going to have to have the garment. You're going to have to be suited and booted to work in this environment. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory to God.
equipment off. Then you can stand against the walls of the devil. Then you can stand the holiness. Then you can stand the righteousness. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus is on my side. And he allows me to step over any safety hazard. He allows me to run around any oil slick. He allows me to move aside of any high road. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad that the Holy Ghost has confirmed it. Everything, everything will be alright.